Hey, it's time for Tech Talk number 12. There we go. Live long and prosper. Uh, we got lots of stuff to talk about tonight. And, uh, of course, if you've got a tech question for us, throw it in the chat room if you're watching right now. That's why we do the show live, everybody. Right. So you guys now. can ask the questions and get immediate response. Yes. Anyway. So, anyway, I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Tech Talk. All right. We'll be right back and get right into it. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars. A Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard. The voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Hi, and welcome to Tiki Bar. <laughs> nice, nice, uh, nice, what do they call it? Dissolve? It, yeah, really. I just noticed that. Why, why do we, it's the first time we've done that. It's usually just like tight cut. Now I it's like, like it. Yeah, it kind of worked there. Yes. You ever watch Tiki Bar? Yeah, Tiki Bar. Bar. Is that still on? I don't know if they're still doing I that. I don't know, but, but the guy would wear a fez. I and I think because of that, Leo Laporte started doing the fez thing. So right. you go to the studio where they tape, twit. Right. He'll always have you sit down with a fez on ah, and take your picture. Yes. I like that. I've always wanted a fez. <laughs> I don't know why. I never wanted to be a Schweiner. Hey, is that, a, thing, is that thing felt? Yeah. It is now. It is now. Yeah, of course. All right. That is so old. It's on Social Security. Uh, anyhow. <laughs> We're here to answer your technological questions about your home voiceover mm -hmm. studio, because that's what George and I do. And uh, we got lots of cool stuff to talk about, lots of interesting topics, a couple of questions. If you have a question about your home voiceover studio or something related to that, send it, it, send it to it right now. Send us to it. Send it to us right now. You can tell I talk for a living. Mm. Send it to us right now at uh, our chat room. Yeah. And uh, we'll get to that question you and we'll answer it. VOBS.TV or the Facebook chat. Either right. one works. E either one. Because we're watching both of them. <laughs> you know, unless we're dying of consumption in the process. Can we start over? No, no we're doing kidding. fine. We're doing great. <laughs> this is no different from any other week. Oh, my God. We've been off for a couple of weeks. you got to get back into the flow. <laughs> you know. Okay. Anyway. So what's in uh, your tech update this week? A bunch of stuff. Um... Well, actually, what a client of mine came to me, sent me an email saying, I'm having a hard time reaching minus 20 dB RMS with my voiceover tracks. I do, have they, a, do they understand what that means? Yeah, in, in her case, yeah, I think okay. she does. But um, I mean, how often does it happen as a voice actor? How often do you have a client specify, we want your files to be delivered with an RMS of minus 20 or minus 19? 
Right. Has that ever happened? I'm not talking about audiobooks, just any oh, other. Oh, no. Well, I mean. Because that's a unique thing. I but. mean, clearly there are some companies. I mean, you know, I'm under contract with Pandora, uh-huh. and, and they send me stuff, and that's clearly what the, what's in there. They have guidelines. Like, oh, we yeah, need this. You know, it's got to be this. It's got to be that. You know, and 20, you know, minus 20 RMS is, is part of it. Now, do you have, do you, and I, I also happen to know that these companies say no processing. Right. Right. So, so as is what I usually say, my understanding, so. I, I thought not being a voice actor that you would need some kind of compression to be able to get to, to game, to maintain minus 20 DB RMS with your voice with a peak of say minus three. I, that, I think with some people it might yeah. be necessary. Uh, you know, I, you know, I came out of radio and we sat there and ride the levels. If you know what the proper level is and you're set properly to start with, yeah. It's not an issue. Do you ever ride level? You never ride level. No, right? I never ride line. No. I, you know, I, you just I, control your dynamics. I just control my dynamics, yeah. my technique. Because remember, my technique is really, really important. Yeah. And, you know, your your proximity to the mic, you know, how much you're projecting, if at all, because you really should really should not be projecting unless you're doing, you know, promo work or a loud commercial or something like that, you know. You know, yeah. Come down to Lancaster National Dragway. Yeah, you know, are you yeah, yelling yeah. it over a PA or are you talking to yeah, somebody so, one-on-one? Exactly, yeah. exactly. So uh, getting the proper the proper uh, modulation is not hard if you know no. what it's supposed to be set at. And you know, I've got several different settings on my interface. It's like, okay, I'm going to be louder for this one. I'm going to be yeah. a little louder, you should, quieter for this. Uh-huh. And it's, it's a combination of mic proximity. And years of experience. I think experience is a big thing. Like, can, because when you when I wa- when I watch a voice track of a newer, fresher voice actor who's just learning, it's very common where you'll see the beginning of the phrase much louder, and the waveform will start oh. with a big spike, and then you'll watch it kind of dwindle down, and then at the end it goes up. And like that's, at the beginning of each sentence or each phrase, each sentence, they'll do that. Yes, yeah, so you'll yeah. see that. And the key is to stay consistent across the board, yeah. and you do that from here and here. Not from writing yeah. the level. Yeah, and you're not having, you know. I, or an engineer writing the yeah. level for you. I mean, we certainly use compression and limiting and things in production to get something to be at a certain volume or fit with other material. But in general, you shouldn't, I guess we shouldn't have to do that to get to achieve those levels. It takes practice and, you Got know, it. so I, I've never had any, had any complaints from clients that say that's the requirement. It's like, okay, I send them what I usually do. Yeah. Now, some people talk about normalizing. Right. Now, if you're a little hot and you normalize, it'll bring it down to right. a tolerable level. And everything comes down. Right. Your RMS comes down too. Right. Yeah. But if you record properly up front yeah. and you hit normalize, shouldn't do anything. Yeah. It should very little. Right. Maybe just a, a little blip. It should only be a half dB at most anyway. Yeah, not much. Makes right, sense. Cool. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Well, um, I got to participate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, have, you, have, have any of your clients ever brought up luffs? Luffs. That's not one. It's I've really heard. not. It's a term that's definitely very well known in broadcast engineering right. or music production and mixing, but voiceover. Not our department. It's not really touched the voiceover. And I find that interesting because what Luffs is is loudness units full scale, and it's a it's a substitute or replacement really for RMS. Yeah. Um, most good software, Twisted Wave, Adobe Audition, when you do an analyze or whatever, check the uh, stats on your file. It's going to give you a number that says LUFS. Right. And it's almost always a little bit under RMS. It's very similar. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's really close. Right. And what I understand is loudness units, what it does is it takes in account the frequency content of mm-hmm. what's in it as well. Because low frequency has more energy. Right. So it's going to sound louder than high frequency and right. stuff. So yeah. it's just not, it's it's another way of measuring average volume is basically right. what it is. And someday we'll probably all be paying attention to it. But right now we still really are not. Right. It seems, it seems I, to me. I wonder if it's because a lot of people who are newer to recording and, you know, and they're, they're good voice actors, they're, they're talented people and they're sending out stuff and perhaps they get hired to do a certain job and a client might say, well, the dynamics are all wrong because this person doesn't really understand what's going on. Yeah. And that's why they've added in all of these different parameters. You, you know, if you don't understand it, it's like, well, yeah. yeah, that's what the internet is for. Well, I mean, it's one and our show, get, of course. Yeah, too, it's one thing so. to pump out a number. It's nothing to know, well, now what do I do? Now that I see it, that's that. Now what, how do I fix it? That's what we're here for. Right. Um, but yeah, Luffs, I think you're going to see it more. It really is something that's more in the domain of the producers. When they send a file out to the to YouTube or Facebook for an ad the or for user, yeah. broadcast, they have very specific specs they have to achieve it. 
And it depends on what it is. I understand that for television broadcasts, it's actually pretty low. It's like minus 24 hmm. for that stuff. And in audiobooks, it's between minus 23 and minus 18. Might be why I can't hear anything when I'm watching TV. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What did he say? Um, in terms of gear, a couple interesting things have popped up. Well, we... I know we covered IK Multimedia at NAM, NAM. Yeah, and they had these stuff. little tiny speakers the, the that IK don't look a whole lot. Speakers, yeah. Well, I, I got an opportunity to, to set those up for somebody ah. and put them in a studio, and holy cow, those things are pretty freaking awesome. I mean, Tell I me. love them because they're really small. Right. So if you have a very cramped workspace, they are honestly not really any bigger than a glass. Like, if you can fit this on each side of your monitor... You can fit a pair of, the, you know, one of these on each side. They're about this big each. Um, so you'd think being really tiny, they you would confuse them for computer speakers. Right. Which are thin and tinny and not, no. These things are unbelievable. These, they have they, they, can, they have they the have power to drive full the full range response. Yeah. I mean, music is reproduced the full, I was listening to everything on these. I was in this, right. in this studio for quite a while and I was playing all kinds of stuff reggae, whatever it was, Ooh. you could hear the full range, the bass lines, the kick drum. Really amazing. I know not relevant for voiceover, but what I'm saying is these things can reproduce the full range of sound pretty much that you care about in a very small size, right. pretty darn accurately. And uh, they're not crazy expensive. They're not cheap. Yes, there are cheaper options out there, but for about $300 a pair, um, they're pretty reasonable for for what they can do. Yeah, it's so. one fifty each. I mean, that's what yeah. you're going to pay for a, a, a regular pair of studio monitors anyway. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, these are these are a dedicated system mm -hmm. that you cannot separate them. Like the ones you have, each one is an amp speaker. Right. These are a system that work together, um, but it's four amplifiers. So there's one little speaker has Ooh. four amps: one for the tweeter, one for the woofer, and then it runs over to the other one, tweeter woofer. It's it's amazing Very little different. package. So. Anyway, if you're looking for something really small in a small space, these are pretty awesome. Um, in a totally different direction, I'm, I'm always looking at stuff different. that's like way off the radar of voiceover just mm -hmm. to see if there's something that nobody has seen yet that could possibly change the paradigm of voiceover. And um, yeah, maybe this is going to happen. Yeah. This may not be it, but <laughs> um, this company, Antlion, I've known about them for quite a while. They make this thing called the Mod Mic, and their, their idea is they're really kind of targeting gamers mm -hmm. um gamers, there are more gamers than there are voice actors a lot more yeah. and gamers are obsessed with the quality of their headphones the comfort of the headphone they wear them for hours and hours and hours so some of them are just like you know there's a million headphones with microphone booms that come on them right. but they want their headphones and then so these guys they made a wired version that was okay but it depended a lot on the input you were plugging it into like, you know, if you were plugging into the computer, did the preamp work? Mm -hmm. Did it sound good? Blah, blah, blah. So what they came out with was one that has its own preamp that also happens to be wireless. And it's called the, the Mod Mic Wireless. And um, I think I paid $109 for it, $109, because I wanted to give this thing a try. And what's interesting is a few things. One is the way it attaches. So, yes, you do have to have a headphone on. Mm -hmm. So... This is a, maybe a thing that might not work for a lot of you because, one, you have to have a headphone because you have to have somewhere to put it. Right. And two, it does not have zero latency monitoring. Uh, so if you're going to have a headphone on, you're probably going to want to have it on maybe like one or, ear. Or turn the volume down. Yeah. And then this has a super strong magnet with a little, little stick-on disc that goes on the mm -hmm. headphone. And then the little boom arm attaches to that. And then that attaches to the headset. So now you have a now you have a head a microphone you can attach to any headset. Okay, well that's not that's okay. Big that's cool. The thing is the sound quality is astoundingly good for what this thing is. It doesn't make sense that it should sound as good as it sounds. the The noise floor is really quite low. Mm -hmm. um, it's a I, condenser mic. It's a condens. Yeah, it's it's a you know it's a tiny little electric microphone. Right. It actually has two capsules inside the head. Wow. There's an Omni and a cardioid, hmm. and you can flick a switch and choose which one works better for you mm -hmm. right on there. So that's probably the Omni, that little dot, and then right. the bigger mm -hmm. one's the cardioid. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll make sure you guys can get a sample of the audio somehow. I'll probably get to do a review on my George the Tech YouTube channel and really kind of delve into it. But, okay, use case. I'm seeing this as um, working... 
getting auditions out on the road. Okay. You have this. You have its little dedicated receiver, and yes, you do have to have this. Right. It may be Bluetooth between the two, but it's using its own special audio codec. It's right. called APTX. Right. That this is the reason why this thing's one of the reasons it sounds so good. Right. It's, and your car. And yeah, <laughs> you well, you plug this, this thing does have to plug into a computer of some kind, mm -hmm. so it can go into a, an adapter into a smartphone, or it goes into your laptop. But now you have a recording system that sounds reasonably good. Definitely good enough for most auditioning. I would say for sure good enough for audiobooks from my little bit of testing I've done. So if you want an alternative way to work where you can feel a little less constrained, if you want to feel untethered doing an audiobook where you can just have on something that you can wear. Right. I hope they come out with like a headband for this. So you can <laughs> yeah, wear it without headband. headphones, maybe. Yeah. Maybe you have maybe maybe you maybe you can have this attached to your skull somehow, this little magnet. Yeah, there you go. I don't know. Whatever. It's kind of an interesting thing. I just got it. I've only barely tested it, but the sound quality was astonishingly good for what it is. And it's just an interesting alternate take on this whole thing. I mean, I did a review a while ago on headphone, headset mics. Right. Only the $2,500 one sounded yeah, the, the, good. Yeah, the DPN one. Uh, yeah, it was a DPA. It was really DPA, good. That yeah. was like $800. And then yeah. it was one from Sheps great. that was like $2,400. This thing sounds really darn close to that. And good. what's the price point on $109. this? $109. Well, there you go. The technology is really trickling down. So if you want to try something different, um, throw it in your bag, throw it in your travel kit, you know. And because the mic is like right here, it, it rejects a lot more background noise and it, it works pretty well. And no plosives. And really, yeah. I mean, don't do what people think you're supposed to do, which is put it in front of your mouth. No, that's a, it pops like mad. You just stretch it out right alongside your mouth there and. It sounds really good. Sounds really good. Anyway, that's the the mod mic wireless. Um, one more thing, the Dropbox. How many of you use Dropbox? Everybody, right? <laughs> Hands go up. Man, all I wish over I was the place. part of that company. Um, <laughs> they so if you have a Dropbox account where you pay ten dollars a month, they doubled your drive space. By now, you've probably got some kind of a notification that you've now got two terabytes of space. That's cool um, and helpful. The problem with having massive amounts of drive space on Dropbox is, what if your hard drive isn't that big? And if you have a laptop, almost nobody has a hard drive more than a terabyte. Most right. people's are half that size. Mine's only 256 gig. Right. So it's a pain in the neck. Um, you guys have heard me talk about something called O-Drive. Um, I've used it as a way to manage that. But finally, the Dropbox, uh, new, the new Dropbox synchronizing tool, you can tell it to unsync. Uh, oh. files that you've already that you're finished with so you yeah. can say i think it's based on time or maybe size or both right it will just start unsyncing files off your computer removing them so what does that mean um i would still have a local backup i'd still have a time machine i'd still have like a dupe of everything because once it then un unsyncs it off your computer if something happens to it on the dropbox end it's gone right that's super unlikely but still, you know, you if it's really important to you, have a you have a local copy. But it 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 lets you have a huge Dropbox and have a really small hard drive. You know, like a two fifty six gig sense. drive. So it drives my wife crazy. It drives Where, everybody crazy. It's like it took up my entire computer. In, yeah, I mean, people will buy a new computer, a brand new Mac, right, with a half a terabyte. Right. And they'll get like well, it's already full. I'm like, well, you got Dropbox, so. Anyway, here's a fix for that. Thanks to Dropbox for fixing that problem. Something two terabytes, and it's like, whoa, where'd that come yeah. from? Yeah. Like, oh boy, I shut yep. everything I ever knew on there. Yeah. So, there you go. There's a bunch of tech news for you, tech stuff. Outstanding. And that leaves well, us a little bit of time for the questions. We do. And if you've got a question, toss it in the chat room right this very minute while we're taking a break. Please. So George and I can address it in the next segment here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Don't go away because we'll be right back. You're watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. 
There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. From voiceoveressentials.com, the skies will soon be aglow with brilliant colors, just like our VO recording sign, now on sale. Act fast, there's a limited supply. Bask in the lovely glow of our remote control 20 color LED sign with more colors than most fireworks displays. Just be sure your significant others can see it and odds are when it lights up, they'll quiet down whilst you're making a living. And because we're celebrating the 4th, you'll save $10 when you buy now. Hurry, we revert to our hard-hearted stingy selves at the stroke of midnight Thursday, July 4th. Free shipping in the USA. The voiceover recording sign sold exclusively at voiceoveressentials.com. It looks great anywhere. Used by voiceovers everywhere, even in the city of love. Save $10 now. Sale ends midnight Thursday, July 4th. Harlan Hogan's voiceoveressentials.com. Porta Boots, and so much more. Well, it's that time of the show where we get to talk about our wonderful sponsors, Source Elements, the inventors of Source Connect, the ones that make it and sell it. And basically, there's a lot of these systems out there now that stream your audio from your studio to the other studio in real time. We've talked about them endlessly on this show. Um, and it's becoming harder to probably differentiate what they're for, what they do, what they don't do. And one thing that just really definitely sets Source Connect standard and pro apart from the other, a lot of the other platforms out there is it is really a dedicated application. Um, and why is that important? It's because that application is supported, developed and supported by Source Elements and it's completely independent of anything else on your machine. It doesn't care what version of Chrome browser is running. Um, it's independent of you know Chrome updating itself at random, which it does all the time. Um, and just provides a really more, a much more reliable, stable platform. Another thing is when you buy it, you buy it. You can buy a license for Source Connect one time. When everything else has gone subscription, they still offer that ability to just buy the license one time and own it for good. And uh, I've got a license that's probably five, six years old, still works beautifully on my systems. I haven't had to upgrade it once. And that's just something that really differentiates it. The other thing is it's just, it's the one that's in all the studios by far. So if you want to be ready to work with those top studios, go get Source Connect. You can get it right now at source-elements.com and get a 15 day free trial. Get it up and running, have it ready, get that demo, and then you'll be ready when the job comes in. Thanks a lot, Source Elements. We'll be right back. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV All right, and we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk number 12. And, uh, you know, George and I spend a great deal of time in other people's closets. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and various other places. Because that's where VoiceOver Booths is born. That's right. Because usually a closet is like the best place you can be. Yeah, it, it I mean, you could people. spend thousands and thousands of dollars on an isolation booth. Like mm -hmm. if you're in the landing path of LaGuardia or LAX or O'Hare or something like that, depending on where you live. San Fernando Valley. Yeah, where you, we're, <laughs> we're like between two airports here, between yeah. Burbank and, and Van yeah. Nuys. And it's like, doo, doo, doo. Yeah. keep amazing that they don't like hit each other. I, know. I figure someone's talking to somebody and... Like, don't take off because this guy's going this There's way. There's some guy that does that. That's right. Um, but what we do is we help you with your home voiceover studio. It's what we do professionally. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we can come to where you are if you're in the greater Los Angeles area. Uh, George likes to travel, and he, he sees people in their studios in various Bring places. George up. Yeah. All Bring right. George Bring George up. It's, like, it's a new service. Bring George up. Um, anyway. 
Uh, if you would like help with your home studio, if you'd like to learn it from the ground up, one, watch this show. Uh, Clearly. Two, yeah, I mean, yeah, nobody archives, talks about this stuff. There's so much in the archives. It's insane. Right. There's a lot of advice out there from on, on, on Facebook and some of the other you know forums and stuff like that from people who are experts at one studio, their own, with their own voice. They don't know who you are. Beware of tech support by committee. Do not crowdsource your home studio. It is, it is, it is, I'm not saying it's always wrong, but it's so, I, you know, you know how you can just post GIFs about anything now? You just search. Right. And the, my favorite one is popcorn. And you just post a picture and it's Michael Jackson in like the thriller video where he's <laughs> sitting and watching the movie and eating popcorn. <laughs> Anytime there's a conversation that goes on and on, literally like what's the, the best microphone for voiceover came up the other day. And I just posted that <laughs> gift because it's just like, let's see what they're talking about now. <laughs> and someone's like, aren't you going to chime in? And I'm like, no, yeah. I am not chiming in on this question. It's, it's, it's like you guys eh, have added. Eh, I mean, must not let, post. That's right. Exactly. Resist. Anywho. But if you want the right information, you got to talk to the guys that actually have built literally several thousand studios. Yeah. And every one of them is completely unique because each one of your voices is unique. And, mm -hmm. and your the, spaces. The and your needs. room you're in and is your different. Budgets. All those things are different. So it's got to be custom thought out for you in particular. So talk to the guys that know how to do it. George knows how to do it. And if you want to talk to him, where do they go? You go to georgethetech.com or georgethe.tech, and that's where you can find all my services. You can book me online there through my scheduler, or you can send files in, and I send you back the results based on the types of projects we're doing. And there's that new thing I mentioned a minute ago, Bring George Out, which is a way you can bring me to your cities and other parts of the world and flyover states and it's a way to bring me in in a more affordable way, sharing it with your community, the cost. It's a George co-op. It's, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a group <laughs> buy or a mass drop. George drop. They just drop you out of a helicopter. And <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> How about you, Dan? Where uh, do they find you? Uh, they can find me at homevoiceoverstudio.com and uh, I talk about what, you know, what it takes to build your home studio and how I can help you out, whether I can come to your place personally or work with you over Zoom or Skype. Does anyone actually use Skype anymore? Not when I can avoid it. Yeah, really. Uh, so, but I, we can like take control of your screen. It's all sorts of stuff we can do to make sure that you're sounding the way you're supposed to sound. And that is like you, because the idea of a home studio is not to make you sound great. Because if you're a good voice actor, you will already sound great. The right. idea of your home voiceover studio is to make you sound like you yeah, yeah. as you exist yeah. and that's what we do and uh if you want to have your audio analyzed you can go to my home page at homevoiceoverstudio.com and click on the specimen collection cup and uh it takes you to a, a dropbox where i can listen to your audio and we can discuss whether it needs help or not in which case we can further the conversation well we have a couple of questions tonight from our massive audience out there starting with our good friend gerard mcguire who talks about something that, you know, I guess if you're a PC person and don't use Adobe Audition, what's his question? Yeah, well, I, he's asking about um, different types of noise reduction tools or noise denoisers. Right. Um, one is RX-7. RX-7. Which is not which a is, car, by the way. People are very familiar with the, uh, the voice denoiser and things like that in RX-7. And then the Bruce Free. Um, what's the difference? Um... The RX-7 package has like a huge variety of different tools, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it can be kind of overwhelming. They have too many, so many variations. There's right. voice denoise and uh, spectral denoiser, and it's kind of overwhelming. Bruce Free, um, I think I like about it is its simplicity. Like you basically listen to the noise and then it removes it. <coughs> Those of you familiar with um, Audacity, mm -hmm. that's something that's been in Audacity forever, but... The Bruce Free one works really, really well. Like it just with one like two second sound sample, it removes the noise very seamlessly, and it does it without a lot of artifacts. Right. You know the sound of denoising or noise oh, reduction. Yes. You just know what that sounds like, right? Because mm -hmm. you've heard it. The way the way Bruce Free does it, it's, it's kind of like magic. It it doesn't make that kind of same swishy, washy sounding noise reduction that right. some of the other ones do. Um, if you really want to hear them in a sort of a more of a comparative thing or a shootout, 
Um, this other thing I do, it's called the Pro Audio Suite. Uh, ProAudioSuite.com, I think it's, it's a podcast. We actually did like a shootout. <laughs> we actually compared the way these things work on different noises. So I would recommend you give that a try. Just give it a listen and yeah. see you. But I, I was really impressed with the Bruce Free, and it's not expensive. It's yeah. like $50. Yeah. Now, personally, my philosophy is if you have to use it, yeah. Most of these tools were never really designed for voiceover in mind. Mm. They were designed by engineers who were like, all right, here's somebody who's doing like an interview out on a battlefield or in a noisy environment, and you've got to save the interview. Or, you know, it's for a major film production. Right. For dry voiceover, it really is far more dependent on getting your environment right, so you have to do as little as possible. Yeah. And I find a lot of people are becoming very dependent on these tools and not necessarily knowing, one, how they work, which is pretty important, and then how to make it work. Yeah. And, and, and neither of these tools, even though RX has a, D, a D-reverb function, mm -hmm. I've messed with it a bunch of times. Haven't it doesn't, it's not magic. <laughs> it doesn't really, it doesn't really work. So if, if you're in a too live of a space, you're stuck with it. Yeah. You know, you get that's get the noise down and then get rid of the reflection, the echo. Those are your two biggest jobs in getting a home studio working. The magic is physics. Yeah. Not yeah. electronics. Yeah. All right. This one could be a long one. Okay. Um, Everybody sit I'll back and relax. Can, and... Being that I have this piece of gear that should help. I'll, I'll speed through it as okay. much as best I can. Cause this is about a specific <laughs> piece of gear. It's about the roadcaster. Um, Ron Montgomery asks, um, George, I listened to your Roadcaster Pro on the Pro Audio Suite podcast. Oh, thank you. So there right. you go. My mother. Um, Bam. Uh, <laughs> here are my questions. Um, one, would you recommend the Roadcaster for VO? Um, yes, with an asterisk. Um, its sound quality is definitely good enough for voiceover. Um, it's far more complicated than you could possibly need. Right. It's got four mic inputs, uh, four headphone outputs, all sorts of processing. Uh, it has a lot of bells and whistles you don't need. It does have one cool feature that you may like to have, and that has internal recording. You can stick a micro SD in there. Mm -hmm. It has this giant record button. And if you're sitting down for like a long audiobook session or you're being directed on the phone for an hour for a, a two hour narration session, mm -hmm. being able to punch a record button on there as a backup is pretty cool. So that it, that is kind of a cool feature. It's not the only thing out there that can do it, but it does it in a really elegant way. And it's simple to use. So there's the, there you go. I, but I would, it's, it's, a, it's got a good interface. It's made by... It's made by Rode. It's got to be uh, they're, they've, they've come up with a good preamp. It sounds good. Right. Um, are the preamps good enough to use? I kind of answered that already. Yes, for Jump sure. Okay. I would say for sure. Um, three, would this work well as an interface when doing source connector IPDTL? I can say uncategorically yes. Because I use it when I'm doing the Pro Audio Suite now, and we use Source Connect to do that show. Mm -hmm. It works beautifully. It's with totally those. seamless with that. It's totally seamless. Great. It works beautifully. It has a mix minus built in, oh. so you don't have looping echoes mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. It works great. Um, would the TRRS output uh, is it good enough to send to a second computer for Source Connect or IPDTL, or would that reduce the load for the recording computer? Um, yeah, it's good enough. I haven't found a need to do that. I'm using a 2011 Mac Mini. 2011. Eight-year-old Mac Mini. And I, I do, you know, I'm recording the show multi-track. I'm doing all these things, Source Connect, all the same time. It's like a Subaru. And it, yeah, it's fine. I do not have any issues at all. It, it handles all of it beautifully. So I haven't had a need to connect to anything else to the TRRS connection. That's like a little mini jack. That's the kind of thing that smartphones mm -hmm. use. Um, so anyway, yeah, it's it's cool. Uh, it's not that expensive. It looks really awesome on your desk. It has a oh, bunch of buttons, buttons to play on. noises and sound effects. You know, it's a waste with a time waster, but it could also be a cool tool for production if you're doing that kind of thing. Right. But it's designed for podcasting. 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 I mean, that's, webcasting. That's what I mean. That's what it was designed. R Road was was at the. Uh, at, at uh, uh, the podcast convention I was at at Philadelphia last summer, and yeah. they were all like, "My God, look at all these people!" Yeah, and they were. I'm sure that yeah, they were like, cha -ching, cha -ching, cha -ching. "We got to create a device for this group because there's far more podcasters than there are voice actors." Yeah, 
believe it or not. Yeah. Just do a search. Yeah, um, for sure. And uh, th- it's a great tool for doing uh, podcasts. Yep. But if you do podcasts and you do voiceover, it might be a really nice unit to have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you're Some- looking at an excuse to spend 600 bucks. Oh, there you go. So, go for it. Somebody asked me this week, uh, they were talking about a, you know something that will give them a lot of mobility. Mm-hmm. And they said, Zoom or a mixer face? Oh, like in terms of portable recording, portable things. recordings. Okay, yeah. which one do you go for? I and I and I basically said, well, the Zoom is very portable, but the mixer face was designed specifically for doing that. Yeah, I mean, the mixer face has the really high quality preamp in it. Definitely yeah. even better than what's in Zoom. The Zoom ain't bad, but the, the one in the mixer face is really good. Um, it's got physical knobs, so right. it's really easy to control. They do have a Zoom, they have a mixer face with a built-in memory card recorder. Right. That's the upgraded version. As the Zoom does, but yeah. yeah. Um, the Zoom has way more bells and whistles. Like, it's way more going on under the hood. But that'll also get you in trouble. Right. It's more complicated to operate. Because you've got to like, all right, where's the menu yeah. for this thing? It's kind of nutty what it can yeah. do. Yeah. So they're very different animals, but um, I would lean towards mixer face for what it is that we do. Right. As voiceover people, or the or the new thing, the mic the Micport Pro Two, right? Which we definitely need to get a review unit because this thing's got some cool, really cool features right. built in you um, hear when that mic? thing comes out. <laughs> yeah, the Micport Pro Two for sure. Absolutely. Check that thing out. All righty. Well, if you've got a question for us, all you got to do is send it to us at the guys mm-hmm. at vobs dot. TV. That's right. Uh, we like getting them. It's like, oh, someone asked us a question. And we throw it in the show every week uh, when we do Tech Talk. And we love hearing from you. And we're here to answer your questions. So do it right now if you haven't. So we'll have it for Tech Talk number 13. 12. 13. Tonight was 12. Today, 13. That means we need three fingers. That's How many four. is that? Thank you. 13. <laughs> I do that all the time. I know, it has been. (laughs) Anyway, we're going to wrap things up right after these important messages. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services, while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Imagine mandatory retirement at age 57, and J. Rodney Turner wasted no time when he got that news. He decided what the next act in life was going to be for him. Voiceover. And fortunately for him, 
he chose the one form of acting, voice acting, for which the demand far exceeds the number of available performers. Audiobook narration. He worked hard and smart, and J. Rodney Turner's name is now on the cover of over 100 of those audiobooks, for sale right now on Audible, which he produced in just the last four years or so. Want to know a secret? Here it is for free. David H. Lawrence the 17th has just released the first episode of a free video training series devoted to audiobooks, and it tells just how J. Rodney Turner did it in vivid detail. Visit vo2gogo.com forward slash vobs to see it. If the idea of getting paid to tell stories appeals to you, or if you're already doing audiobooks but aren't having the success you know you're capable of achieving, this video is a must-see. Check out the video here. Visit vo2gogo.com forward slash vobs. That's vo2gogo.com forward slash vobs. Hey guys, this is Tom, also known as the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants, and you want to fill your ear holes and your eye holes with Dan and George and the Audio Body Shop. Ah! Meow. Snail. Well, we've come to the end of another Tech Talk. Yes, we have. But it's so much fun doing it with you because, you know, we, we, we have so much in common when it comes to these things. And, you know, you come from it from the technical end and I come from it from the voiceover end. And We it, have that, what is that thing, those circles? The, the, the Venn di Ven diagram. Venn. Yes. Yes. See. And we have big vocabularies. And it, it's we because it's a Venn diagram for sound, it's a Sven diagram. Ooh. You heard it here, folks. You heard it here first. <laughs> That's what they call it in Sweden, anyway. Uh, no we, way. Yeah. Next week, we'll have another fantastic guest. Yeah. So stay tuned to find out who that's going to be. Uh, who are our donors of the week? Who we are so graciously thankful to. Uh, we got donations from Yes Icon. That's Martha. Martha. Uh, Shana Pennington Baird. Stephanie Sutherland. Patty Gibbons, Donna Burtzel, Thomas Pinto, and Phillips Pierce are making donations. They, these are all repeat names for us because they're all subscribing. They're using the ability to make a subscription on PayPal through our website. Right. Um, you, you can do that or just make a single-time donation if you found something really, really helpful for that show or maybe we answered your question or just cause. Um, but we really appreciate that support. Cool. All right. Hey, you know... We're here to help you out. We want to see what you guys are doing out there. Show us your booths, please. Show us your booths. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's I mean, it's great seeing great landscapes of Alaska. <laughs> yeah. But we'd rather see your booths. Uh, show us what how creative you can be and how well it works. We'd like to hear how it sounds, too. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if you're talking into a room full of egg crates, well, <laughs> I mean, you know, or styrofoam cups, as we had a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> kind of interesting yeah. uh but we want to see your booths and what you do is send them to us at the guys at vobs.tv and shoot them in landscape not portrait you know i mean it's like when you take your iphone and take these pictures don't do it like this we're all so instagram programmed to yeah, hold the phone forget vertically. It. Sideways. Hold it sideways. Yeah. so it looks good on the screen here because that's how I took this particular picture, going 30 miles an hour across a train trestle <laughs> in the middle of nowhere, Alaska. You were in a train, hopefully. We were, in, yes, okay, I was so. on the train. It would be the Alaska okay. Railroad, which is a great railroad, by the way. <laughs> and you'll notice, though, but it's it's fascinating with this river here. Yeah. It's the color of the water here is clear until it gets into this river, which is filled with glacial silt from all the melting glaciers. And if you if you zoomed in on that picture right there you'd see that it, the water there is actually blue going into coffee. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, fascinating. Took a raft ride on the, in this river, That's too. freaking cool. That is cool. Was, it was really cool. That is awesome. Really, really cool. Show us your boots. First day. That's right. Uh, and it was my, my mother-in-law's 85th birthday. There you go. But she wasn't with us on this segment. She was just on the boat. We just left her there and sent her off <laughs> on an iceberg. <laughs> I hope she's not watching. Um... Uh, uh. Okay. If you want we help with your this before yeah, we really yeah, take a deep, deep. I keep digging and it doesn't get any smaller. 
<laughs> I don't get it. Hey, if you want to work with George with your home studio, where do they go? GeorgeTheTech.com. And Dan is over at HomeVoiceOverStudio.com. Easy to find. Ooh. Don't touch that. Uh, and uh, we need to thank our sponsors, of course. Uh, Hargan, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. Hargan Hurlins and VoiceOver. Sorry, I had to. Uh, VoiceOver Extra. Uh, source Elements. VO2 GoGo. VoiceActorWebsites.com. Dan J. Michael Collins Demos. Does a great job with them. I just did yeah. one with him. I did. Yeah. An announcer. Did an demo. announcer one. An announcer an demo. Actual just announcer so I could be demo. different from everybody else. Damn it. Yeah, well that done. Was, and, it, and it sounded great. Uh, we need to thank the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the betterment of better webcasting. Thanks yes. to uh, to them. Um, We're waiting for our producer Catherine to come back. She's she's dealing with family matters, but we appreciate all the service she's done for us for six, seven, how many years? Seven now? years. At seven least years. seven years. Yeah, she Holy joined cow. us in our second year. Thank you. We could not have done it without her. Yeah, Mike uh, Merlino, who. Where, where, I think he was having dinner tonight, so I hope it was very good, Mike. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's and not, and his mom didn't make it because yeah. she's busy here working yeah. for us. Chat room and... duty, duty, duty is normally Mike and uh, Sue. And Sue is our technical director, Sue Molino. And Lee Penny, we're not sure what he does, but he's Lee Penny. Last I saw, he was making radio control car accessories. Oh, cool. Living a childhood dream, apparently. Uh, it happens when you get to our age. Yeah. You know, I was like, I couldn't do this when I was a kid. Now I can do it. Anyway. Well, as you know, this business is not easy. Voiceover takes, you know, not only voice acting skill, but you also have to have somewhat the technical skills to do what it takes to record that magnificent voice of yours. And that's why we're here, because we want you to make it sound right. So the guys at the other end make it sound they're like, eh, yeah. no problem. The, I, think the, you, I think the problem with audio is, is you don't want it to sound bad. Yes, exactly. 